now let's do number eight. So number eight says, how many sides does a hexagon have? Number eight. So it says, how many sides does a hexagon have? So again here, it's very simple, uh, simple, simple geometry. Again, take a minute to think about this question. And uh, we'll, th we'll, 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 we'll take it up together because we're talking about geometry, we're talking about sides, and we can also talk about angles here in this case as well. Maybe I'll extend the question and talk about angles as well. So take a moment to think about this problem here. How many sides does hexagon have? And what we can do is we can actually look at the prefix here, the word hex. What does the word hex mean? And, and and what does the word gone mean, right? So again, you have, if you have like a, so this is the concept of a polygon, right? If we have a polygon, a polygon is simply a shape with many sides, right? Many sides. The word poly means many, right? Poly, polynomial means uh, many, many, uh, many variables. Uh, poly, uh, what else is a poly word? I can't think of anything, but polygon uh, shape with many sides, right? So the word poly means many here, and gone is just um, a shape, right? So and if we have a hexagon or a hexagon, then it's a shape with how many sides, right? So when you talk about hexagon, it would be a shape with six sides the the word uh the term prefix hex means six right so again if you had something like um like a uh let me think about uh so if it, if the word triangle for example so let me do a side here in red so shape ha minimum has to have three sides right because it can't have a shape with a line that doesn't make sense it has to connect all their points right so a triangle has three sides right the word try is three right think uh Think of a, a tricycle, three wheels, right? So a try here is a three-sided shape, right? Sh shape. Um, a rectangle or quadrilateral, more specifically, quadrilateral. I hope I spelled that right. Quadrilateral has four sides, right? The word quad is four sides. Four means four, right? Four-sided shape. Right? So all these terms are dependent on their prefixes, right? And we can actually look at, um, if you want to look more at prefixes, what we can talk about, uh, so this here is six sides. So that's the, that's the solution to the problem. But if we have a pentagon, the US pentagon here has five sides or a pentagram has five, so there's five sides to that. So a hexagon has six and a, so this is where the word pent is five. Hepta would be seven, right? A heptagon will have seven sides and the octagon. So you can think of a typical, like a, if you're a, a UFC or an MMA uh, uh, watcher, or a viewer, uh, octagon has eight sides, right? They fight in an eight-sided ring, right? So it has eight sides. And then uh, the next one here, if, if I want nine sides, I would have something like a nonagon, right? A nonagon would have nine sides. And then finally, a decagon would have 10 sides, right? 10 sides. So a decade, there's 10 years in a decade, right? The word dec is, uh, means 10. So all these prefixes are actually really important. You're going to have to memorize a lot of these ones. So let me just highlight them again. So penta, you, you can think of a pentakill is five kills, right? Or like penta, pentagram, pentagon, there's there's five, right? There's five. Uh, hepta is seven. Uh, we already did six, right? Six here is hexagon here. Uh, octagon is oct. So it's uh, there's eight sides. Nonagon is nine, decagon here is 10. So again, we have, these are all the prefixes and it helps us uh, define how many sides a polygon has. So these are all good prefixes. Let me look at this here. So a hexagon has six vertexes, a cone, six sides, and six interior angles. So this here is even more specific here. And there's regular and non-regular uh, uh, hexagons. So let me just draw this out for you. And they're actually exploring angles as well. So let's, let me look at, Let's look at this hexagon here. And basically, if there's six sides, um, what you can do is you can do something called uh, the interior angles. So when we talk about interior angles, we're talking about the sum of interior angles in a polygon. So what we're gonna do is, I'm, gonna, I'm extending this question, I'm gonna talk to you, I'm gonna tell, uh, explain to you the concept of what that is. So the sum, so, it's, so this, I'm gonna do this in black here. So this is 
uh, the sum of all interior angles. So sum of interior angles. So this would equal, uh, you can think of it as n minus 2 times 180. So n minus 2 times 180. So what that is, what that is, is, is it means that my sum of all the angles, all these angles here, Oh, thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in, by the way. Um, so I have here, this is an angle here. There's an angle here, 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 and here. These are six angles, right? There's six angles. And these are all interior angles. They exist inside the shape. So when we talk about sum of interior angles, what that means is it's going to equal, N here is how many sides the shape it has. So th this here would be six sides, right? I have six minus two times 180 degrees. Six minus two is four times 180 degrees, which means 180 times four here is 720 degrees, right? So 720 degrees is the sum of my interior angles in polygon. And what I can do is if I have a regular polygon where all of these sides are equal. So if I said that all of this, these sides, so this is X, this side is X, 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 X. So again, all of these sides are equal, then all the angles have to be equal, right? According to the theorem, right? Where in terms of if all sides are equal, then all angles have to be equal for congruency, right? So if I have six angles and they all have to sum up to 720, what I can do is I can take 720, which is the sum of my interior angles. I can divide that number by six because we have six sides and six angles, and that will give me 120 degrees per angle, right? So all of these angles here. So all angles inside, all angles, or sorry, individual angles are 120, right? So let me see, I'll, I'll, I'll write here, uh, each angle equals 120 degrees. And a re this is a regular polygon. So when we talk about regular polygon, it's all the sides have the same length, right? And then what we have is also we have a non-regular uh, polygon where we have a different, we have different uh, sides, right? So if I draw something like, so this here is kind of a non-regular polygon, right? I have maybe this side, this side, this side here is longer than this side, right? So again, if I draw a non-regular polygon, again, the sum of the interior angles is still, so sum of int, I'll say int angles, is still equal 720. However, oh, this is a really bad zero, sorry. Let's erase this. Um, it still equals 720 degrees. However, not every angle is 120 degrees, right? So that means that not every angle, I can't divide it by six because not all the angles are the same, right? But however, it all sums to 720. So that I have a regular polygon, a hexagon, or a regular, and this is the same exact same thing for any other polygon, right? So if we had an octagon, for example, my n would equal eight, and I would get a different a number for some of my interior angles. But for a non-regular uh, polygon, Again, my side lengths are not the same here. So again, that's kind of the difference between a regular and a non-regular polygon. So that's awesome. Uh, that's what they did here. Regular polygon has interior shapes, so they're all the same. Good. Non-regular hexagon like, looks, like, looks like this. Like, this is an irregular hexagon. I don't have 120 degrees uh, for these angles here. So this is correct. So this here is great solution and logic. So that here is, that was number seven, I think. Or number, this is number eight, number eight.